Hey there. Um, gonna get the grill fired up today. Going to do some uh, kind of beer can chicken. Not exactly. But let's get this, get, uh, this going first and then we'll talk about it. All right, now uh, while that's heating up, uh, basically what I'm looking to do today is a variation on beer can chicken. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, the idea of beer can chicken is that you put a beer can, usually still mostly full, um, into a chicken while it's cooking on a grill or a smoker. And as that heats up, uh, for one thing, the metal helps cook the chicken from the inside. The other thing is that the liquid in there starts to evaporate, and as it evaporates, uh, you get all of that humidity, all that moisture, and all that flavor coming out of it into the chicken. Now, I'm not gonna use a beer can today, though. I'm gonna show you something else that I've got that uh, I've not tried before, but I think it's gonna be really good. So, while that keeps smoking and heating up, I'm going to head over to the table, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. All right, we are at the table again. Got my whole chicken here, and we're going to get this uh, ready to cook. Now, I mentioned before that uh, I was doing a take on beer can chicken. Like I said, the idea being that you stand the chicken up with the can inside of it, that liquid boils away as it cooks, gives you flavor, gives you all that goodness. It's usually done with beer, sometimes done with Coke, but I saw something during the shopping this week and I thought, well, I've just got to try that. So, what's my secret ingredient this week? Premixed Jack and Coke. Now, One part of me says that, I mean, I'd just mix these. I wouldn't drink them myself. But for the idea of Coke can chicken, that's going to add extra flavor. The alcohol is going to cook off, so it's not going to be an issue for uh, kids eating it and things like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our chicken ready. Get it unwrapped. Come on, get you out of there. All right. Get me a glove on to uh, get this ready with. Now, before we get it on the grill, we do still need to get the chicken ready. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and open up my spice mix. And no, this is not the right tool for this job. Don't, uh, don't follow my advice on opening things, just cooking things. Um, I would normally use a spoon to pop that open with, but I didn't want to have one out here with me. I've got my butter spray that I've used before. I'm going to go ahead and give the, co give the uh, chicken a good bath in that butter spray. And then we're going to put some Old Bay seasoning on it. Now this is not spicy, um, as in hot. It's got some lovely spices in it, but uh, not a lot of heat, which is the preference of my grandkids. Unfortunately, I've not managed to uh, get some uh, Louisiana pallets into them yet. They're still liking their milder foods. I'll keep working on it. So, give that skin a good 
it with that flavor. Get the bees out of here. And because I did have someone in the comments ask in the last video why I did not season the back of my chicken, uh, most times when my family's having a whole chicken, they completely forget about the skin on the back, and it gets left and goes to waste. So I often don't spice it, uh, sometimes not at all. This time, though, I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Because we are cooking this chicken upright rather than on its back, uh, go ahead and get some nice color on there as well. Right, so we've got our chicken ready. From there, basically, we're going to need to wait until the coals are hot. We're going to need to open up our can. And you don't want to put it in there completely full. You want it probably to be about three quarters full. So I'll need to, you know, do something about that. Pardon me. All right. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to go check on our coals, and we're going to head over to the grill. I've got you a bit of a top-down view on the grill now just because I want to show you a couple of things about this. Now, as I break it down here, uh, I'm going to lift this out. So this bottom level down here is where we're going to have our coals or heat. Now, this layer in the middle normally goes in just to break the heat away from uh, hitting what we're cooking. And then this layer up here goes in to actually cook on. Today, we're going to do that a little bit differently. Our coals will still be going in the bottom here. Uh, that won't be changing. But then we're going to put the grill on without the heat break, because we actually want to cook on, under direct heat today. And then... We're going to have this top one on, and we're going to remove this grill. Now, why are we doing that? Because cooking a chicken upright is a bit tall, so I need that extra height. So we're going to set the chicken on this lower grill, let it sit up here, and then we'll put the lid on it and let it cook like that. I'll come back and show you what I mean as soon as the coals are ready. Editing Casey here. I'm going to go ahead and mute the audio on the video itself and take over because this is where everything goes completely and totally wrong. Now, I get the chicken on the grill, on the can, as expected. About that time, I'm going to go ahead and put the ring on. Everything's going fine at this point. Now at this point I'm uh, putting the lid on and I have a look and I realize that the wood that I put on the grill just a moment ago, uh, I had not pre-soaked it and as such it's flaring up a lot more than I expected it to. So I grab my tongs thinking I'll just move the wood uh, away from the center of the fire so that it does not uh, burn the chicken and it can kind of cook off around the edges. I start doing that, at which point the chicken, of course, gets knocked over. Now, when the chicken goes over, the JD and Coke goes all over the fire, 
Some of it goes into the cavity of the chicken, but a lot of it goes straight down into my coals. Uh, you see that's where the smoke starts kicking up quite a bit more. I start to think about standing the chicken up again and then realize that uh, with the, most of the can spilled already, there's not much point. So I leave it laying down on its back with the can still in it, with the liquid inside, whatever's left of it. Uh, and I basically go ahead and smoke off the chicken in the grill with that, what's left of it. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead after a few minutes and moved it up to the top grill. Um, left the can in it still, with some liquid still in there, which means I'm still getting that flavor. It's just not going the way I wanted it to. And um, now I'm going to be honest, I nearly did not release this video today. Uh, it was a case of kind of everything going wrong with the cook that could go wrong. Uh, audio issues, cooking issues, you name it. But I wanted to kind of show you that even if things go wrong, you can adapt, you can uh, adjust, and you can still keep grilling. There we have it. One finished uh, Coke can chicken, sort of, and uh, dinner for the family, sorted out and taken care of, all in about two hours, in spite of the problems. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump off now, and I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully for a bit of better luck. To those of you who have stuck around to the very end of the video here, I want to say a massive and huge thank you very much. Uh, I could not keep doing this without you. You keep me motivated. Uh, please like, please subscribe if you are not yet, if you want to stick around, hopefully for some much better days than this one was. And uh, I appreciate all of the comments and everything that you guys uh, say and do for me. Uh, see you next time.